Welcome to another episode of How I Discovered My Gift with yours truly, David D. Simons. I'm excited, and my excited is excited to have today's guest on, uh, Doug Taylor, or known as Dougie. I want to I wanna tell you a little bit about my experience. Well, well, first, Doug is a, 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 a just a great soul, great person. Uh, a, you're going to enjoy this episode. I already know uh, someone that has vision beyond your wildest expectation. I, 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 he's a man of vision, and, and the va- vision continues to expand. And uh, you're going to hear all about his company. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to tell you about my experience with his company. I uh, ordered some of the cookies that some of you already may be aware of, and some of you are going to just now learn about Taylor Chip. And I have I had such a good experience. I'm like, oh my goodness, I am going to put on 20 to 30 pounds because they're so good. The peanut butter and jelly is my absolute favorite. But let me, I could go on and on and on about his amazing product and amazing company he's building. But let me just tell you that they started in 2018 and they've become one of the largest cookie companies over the last four years. And they've achieved a large cult-like following. And it's it's understandable why that's the case because the quality of the food, the quality of the branding, the quality of the experience. I can tell you from my own personal experience, it's excellent. So yeah, I, I'll take give it over to you, Doug. Uh, and do you prefer if we go Dougie or Doug, man? I, 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 oh, I Dougie's never... fine. That's fine. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I do either one. I answer to anything. Okay. Much, you know, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so so we st- my wife and I started making cookies, but you know, just as something fun to do in like 2015 when we were dating. Then uh, we got engaged. Cookies was a huge part of, you know, our baking in general. I mean, we baked our own wedding cake and, you know, we've, we very much have always prioritized our faith as Mm -hmm. well. And so as a dating young couple, um, you got to find ways to stay out of trouble. And so we would bake in, in our parents' kitchen and, and then when when uh, it was 2017 is when we went to get married and uh, with taylorchip.com which is our cookie website started as our wedding registry website and like where our guests would go and cuz we were becoming the tailors and then we had our cookie recipe that everyone loved and so we made them really really big and to fit into a like the size of a CD to fit into a CD sleeve and then gave them out as wedding favors and so that was and we put little tailor chip stickers on and that was like how it all got started um and we kind of just didn't think much of it went back to our normal jobs but people started we started bringing our cookies places and people started ordering them and then uh somebody approached us about a market that they were starting and um it was about four hundred dollars a month of rent and utilities all in to be at this market and then it was about 15,000 to start so we had 5,000 in savings combined and then we got a bunch of credit cards to start it and uh, we started it and then flash forward to uh, that was eight 2018 five years later August of 2018 coming up actually yeah this month we turned six um, and uh, and yeah Forbes 30 under 30 uh, my wife made that Inc. 500, number 285, um, and just continue to scale it. We're at seven locations, but we do e-commerce. We're coming up on 200 locations with DPG, so you can get us net nationally in like um, Dash Mart, which is a plat- like a grocery store off DoorDash. Um, you can get us um in steward leonard's is like another grocery store in the connecticut area and just a bunch of different retailer partners that we've been scaling that quick this year now that we have our manufacturing down and then we um and then we have we're building two locations in philadelphia and then we are uh um building a twenty thousand square foot centralized manufacturing facility that i was just on the phone before this trying to close the financing on it we needed about it's about 12 and a half million dollar loan um and so we've been able to get we've been able to cover about four million of that and then we have another five million through the sba and um then we are looking for our last traditional bank partner for that like 2.7 ish million or whatever that's left over um, but the, but we got a guarantee from Pennsylvania to back 
the traditional. And so it's just been like the Lord's favor um, because with how big our business, even though we're big, there's no way that we justify this, even though we see where we're going. Like we're going to be by 2029, we're hoping to be close to a quarter billion in revenue. Um, and so, you know, we see where we're going. And so we need the production. We're out of space at our current facility, everything centralized manufacturing for all our stores. Um, but the ask for the building, we were building it from scratch. It's creamery. It's creamery and dairy is more regulated than pharmaceuticals. And so you just need to do things uh, very, it's just, it's a huge undertaking that we've been working on for four years. And it's just the Lord's favor has come in so much that like introductions to like the secretary of agriculture for Pennsylvania, um, different senators have backed the project. Uh, We've gotten just about a million dollars of grants for it so far. And, um, and then, and then creative financing through the SBA has helped with, with another, um two and a half million and then and then the government is actually backing it because they need more dairy stuff too and so they're putting guarantees on traditional side and it's just been through meeting people and just like it's been wild so there's like that whole side but but that and 12 million dollars sounds like a lot but it's not when you think about the ability to do a hundred million dollars per shift a year out of that facility and so that's kind of what we're building towards that's the next phase and then from there we'll be able to scale our concept, you know, nationally, and then hopefully internationally from there, as we continue to set up these centralized facilities around the U S and around the world. That is so amazing, Dougie. Wow, man. Wow. Just, I know people are blown away as I am. Now I want to go back. I want to go back some steps. I want to go back to childhood, little Dougie walking around, like, Growing up, what was that experience as a child and what was like, could you see, like, was there an entrepreneurial drive as a child? Like, talk to me about that. Yeah, my mom was, my, my mom, she had a rough childhood, so she was abused all through her childhood. Um, starting to ring, hang on a second, let me scoot in underneath the there we go. We're good to go. I'm outside because my daughter's sleeping and, and then I was like, and then I couldn't use my laptop. So I figured the lighting would be better out here. But, um, so yeah, my mom, she, um, hugely impactful in my life. I mean, she was abused all through childhood, um, sexually and, and, and more. And then because of that, she started smoking and drinking when she was like 11, um, and just didn't know how to read. And they just pushed her through. And then she went traveling around the, down to Florida and just was a drug addict and, you know, meth and all that stuff for years. And um, she and but one thing like so she got eventually got sober when she was having my older sister, who's two years older than me. But she was a single mom as as my birth dad left. And uh, we just never had money but she was so resilient and forgiving and graceful because she never really blamed her rapist or the bad things that happened to her. She almost like one, she just forgives. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and then two, she's always looking to see how she could be better. Like Mm -hmm. she never says, well, I was, she never ever said I was, I was abused. 15 years Mm. in a row every day. Mm. I have every excuse in the book to not do, do anything with my life. But she never said that, that thought never even, I don't think that ever has even came across her head. Instead, she was a single mom. So she had to provide for us and she couldn't really read well. So she homeschooled us because the whole, she had an encounter with the Lord where she says he knocked her off our bar stool and she was so, she was left completely sober just like that where it was it was just a um in one moment she was free of all drugs and all addiction and she never went back and she just says you know he saved me i mean one thing that she says said to even my my wife loves her so much because she's like can talk to her about anything and she's like oh honey it doesn't matter he can't be worse than me 
Mm. Um, and so she's just so filled with grace and just takes so much responsibility, even mm. when she shouldn't, and which is so countercultural, but it's just the right thing to do. And so because of that, she started a cleaning business where she would take us, homeschool us, she would teach herself the curriculum and then teach it back to us so that she knew how to read. And then she would take us into each all these houses. I mean, I remember being little and she would take any job on it. I remember there being feces in the inner cities, um, feces on the in the middle of the hallways because there was people and she would clean places and take us in places that the landlord wouldn't go in without a gun. And she just didn't, but she just did what she had to do and so I think like where one, I just saw that growing up. And even though we did not have money, we had, she was just so, such a wonder, wonderful human. And I just saw that. And so I, I've always taken personal responsibility and accountability and I never went to college. Um, and I was, I, you know, you have ADHD and all these and dyslexia and all these things, but it, to me, that didn't matter it's all about taking responsibility. And so that's what I, that's what I would say, like was formative in my years of just understanding and being able to actually see and, and, and actually comprehend what, what my mom was doing and how she was living her life. That's a blessing in itself. But yeah, I think it's just all about, you know, you can do anything that you want to do, regardless of where you come from, regardless of your skin color, regardless of all these things that a bunch of stupid people, that wants you to be down on yourself, put in front of you, like that's not real. What's real is personal responsibility. And my mom taught me that. And that was very formative to me in, in the beginning of when I was growing up. And that was very clear. And so I've always just taken that. Um, and that's how I've been able to build what I've been able to build. And when we fail, it's my fault. And when we succeed, it's the Lord's fault, honestly. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> I love that attitude, man. That is fire I, I mean like wow what what an experience you know seeing that and kudos to your mother and and that attitude which is very rare uh to have that kind of mindset you're right it's so countercultural. Uh, so dougie when you look at it what's your most dominant gift if you had to evaluate what your most dominant gift is i am really good at um man people people understanding people I'm really good at um, understanding and gaining perspective and um, you could call it sales, <laughs> but mm -hmm. like being able to convince people to join the team or, you know, you know, show like, I'm just good at vision casting. I mean, I'm great. I, I did all our branding for our, our company. I mean, I, I understand all of Adobe and, I did all of our paid, I'm, I've managed well over, you know, seven figures of ad spend every year myself. Um, I have uh, people helping me on that now, of course, but, but I know how to do all of that stuff. But that stuff is like, you can learn how to program. You can learn how to, as long as you enjoy the process of learning and like understand how to work that muscle that anyone can learn how to do these different things. I think there, the thing that I'm naturally good at is just casting vision and getting people on the team. Wow. When did you notice this? Like, like was it somebody that pointed out in your childhood or maybe adulthood or, or as you – like, when did you realize, you know what? It's always been there, right? But, but I am really good at this. Like, when did you notice? I think I just always considered myself – less smart than other people um and so i i was really impacted when when i watching apple come of age mm -hmm. was uh you know i was like 10 11 12 when like what was i 10 12 when the iphone came out and all that stuff and it's like the interesting thing about steve jobs is he was a useless idiot who knew how to yell at people not really i'm just he was me i mean he was he, the interesting thing about him is he is the only, you know, huge founder that didn't have any technical skills. Mm. You know, Amazon, Jeff Bezos had knew how to code, could do everything in an elementary form 
when they were starting the company, he could do every aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Um, you could say the same thing about Mark Zuckerberg. He's a, he's just a coder. And so of course he coded something and built something and, and, and he can do every aspect of that rudimental MVP that they built. Right. Every single person that I know, um, can do some can has the including me in our company because i tried a different company where i didn't have those rudimentary skills and i was relying on other people um but like that's something that's interesting about steve jobs and steve wozniak is wozniak was willing to do the work steve knew how to direct him in that mm -hmm. and that very much influenced me because that's the only company of that level that the founder had no technical skill in that age that I know of. Um, and so that just interests me because I always saw myself as someone that was good at understanding things, but not good at actually doing them. You know, ADHD, whatever, you're, you're bouncing around. And so I just always saw myself as naturally not smart. And I think that's still true to this day. And so I knew, one, I had to work harder than everyone else, which I'm okay with, mm -hmm. to learn. But then also I had to be really good at understanding people. And, and another thing was I still to this day can't spell. And so the way that I had to spell or had to communicate with people and was always unique. And so that allowed me to think about things differently and like look at different paths than other people were looking at. Um, so I think that's like just the natural, I think that's answers the question where it's just like, that's what naturally is comes good to me is, people i understand people that's man and if there's a if there's a gift to be good at if that is one of the most valuable assets in the world to be great with people right um that's phenomenal man i think i think it's i think it's encouraging right like uh i, I similar to you never thought of myself as smart and you know would kind of get made fun of for different mm -hmm. different things growing up and so so i can relate to you in in that sense of just like you know, people don't, they, they're, when people talk about smarts, they usually talk about IQ from a, 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 you know, oh, how much history can you spit off or how much, you know, knowledge or math or this, but, but, but there's a, I forgot what the term is, but there's a people smarts. There's yeah. also a people smart, yeah. like being a, the human quotient or emotional intelligence and which can help in sales and help in all the things that you're, you're great at as, as, as well as the vision side. So I'm very intrigued by um that and 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 so as you go through this journey right like you're learning you know as you're inspired by steve jobs you 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 know you're you're marrying your wife and and you're building this business was taylor chip you said there's another organization was what was the organization you built before the 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 company that you've built today i uh i grew up around like being homeschooled i grew up around incredible musicians Mm -hmm. of which I was not one of them. Um, mm -hmm. and so I, but I always pretended. And so I drummed and, um, but I always, I can't sing, excuse me. <clears throat> I can't sing. And, and although I'm really good at writing songs, I don't have a natural talent for keeping a, keeping tempo or singing or anything like that. And so I was never going to be the best drummer. So somebody else was always going to be chosen over me when it comes to the bands and the different things like that. And, so, and that's all good. So I started a recording studio and a record label tried to start it with all my friends who were amazingly talented. And they were so talented that they got in their own way. So they could create this, this masterpiece, but they refused to release it. And so then I would write songs and then get them to sing on it. But it was always relying on other people. And so it was a studio that I ended up, um, ended up, doing and and uh still to this day it's around i sold it to my friend who started it who we both started it together and he wanted to buy me out and, and so it is um but yeah it was just that's something where like i tried to get like i knew that if i could if i could sing i would be able to get a t number one hit song like i would absolutely dominate that but i couldn't sing and so I was trying to rely on other people around me who I knew were talented, but I couldn't get them to focus and, and put the work in consistently because it's so hard to find, it's so hard to find your Steve. I'm basically, you know, it's hard to find your Steve Wozniak if you yourself are not him. Mm -hmm. And so that was, uh, 
but that was that was the adventure that was what we tried wow so how did that lead to would you say in preparation for the next and the you know taylor chip and how did how did that lead to that entrepreneurial endeavor right as well i mean because i know like you said in the beginning it started off really just you know a gift for friends and family and then but there's this there's already this entrepreneurial mind that you already have you developed and and this personal responsibility so i just kind of want you to weave in for the listeners how these things stack up, this personal responsibility, this ability to recognize vision and understanding people, and then how you threw all this into Taylor Chip? I think first and foremost was I only ever wanted to do something that really excited me. Mm. Um, So I was never money focused. Mm. And so I think that's super, even though I didn't have money, Mm -hmm. I managed my expenses my whole life to where I was never in debt. I didn't even have a car loan. And so I had flexibility of freedom of choice. So you, if you are not in debt and you're living in your, I mean, in my case, I was living in my parents' house, um, you know, and if you're not in debt, then you, you have all the freedom, right? Mm-hmm. Zero debt equals a lot of freedom. And so in that sense of it, um, I had a lot of room to, um, yeah. To, to ask me the question again because I went on a tangent. See, there's that. Yeah, no, no, it's great. Yeah. Um, so, how the stacking kind of goes together, right? Ah, uh, like, yes, 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 right. So that's where the. So I always had freedom to choose what I wanted to do, and so I would spend a lot of time, like, I would spend time in my room just reading books or whatever, and, and trying to figure out what I wanted to do and what I was passionate about, and so. The recording studio was, and music was what I was passionate about, but when I started that, I sucked at it. So I ended up pushing all the production and stuff on my partner. And then I started doing all the search engine optimization, the Facebook ad, the uh, branding, the artists would come in, they'd want to record it. And then I'd say, well, I can do, I can do music videos if you want me to, I can do that. And I got a camera and started learning, you know, Final Cut Pro, which moved into Premiere and all of that stuff. And then and then, uh, you know, they want album art. And so I said, I could do album art, charge them 50 bucks and spend eight hours trying to get, trying to figure out how on Photoshop and Illustrator I can do what they want done. <laughs> and that was like how I learned all those things. And so all of that bled into Taylor Chip very easily. I mean, so I always joke, I was, I learned how to successfully sell music and cookies are easy compared to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically the secret the secret to being a good at like marketing is start by selling something that no one wants to buy mm. Do it successfully and then if you find something that somebody actually wants to buy it's a, it's a breeze <laughs> yes because if i remember right because when we talked about the, the 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 either band or the musicians they did end up doing pretty well right mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah it's still going i mean I think my my friend makes like seventy grand a year being a full time musician, which you know what, like you're, that's a win. Like you're, yeah. in my opinion, For again sure. the mu- the number is not, the number is arbitrary, to mm-hmm. compare compared to what the actual goal is, like mm-hmm. what your goal is, and so if your goal is to be a full time musician and you love that. You're happy at forty thousand. I mean, if you can pay for your pay your mortgage and, and have a family and do what you love, that's what you can't complain. That's right. I love that, man. So, I I just know this from being an entrepreneur myself, right? And I, it's funny enough. I I had I had a record label too. I had a Christian rap label when I was oh, nice. uh, younger, and uh, so I I agree with you. Selling music is was is the hard <laughs> <Yeah>. thing, right? <laughs> totally. But but. Yeah. But I, I really want for listeners to hear, right, they, they hear this amazing vision, and we're going to talk more about, you know, the building of Taylor Chip, but they hear this amazing vision and all the things that, you know, you have done to build this company up, but nobody knows the behind the scenes, the dark hours where you're, you're either alone at night or working. And so if you could talk about the development behind the scenes, right, from the personal development. Like you talked a little bit about it, the reading, masterminds, pouring into yourself, adding to your skill sets, getting better at sales, right? All this stuff, people see the great, the the glory, but they don't know the stuff behind. So we'd love for you to share a little bit of that. 
Yeah, well, I mean, it's just like, a lot of times it just sucks. I mean, building is, doing something that nobody else has done or that rare, rarely people do is as hard as you think it would be and a lot harder. And thankfully, when you go into something, you have an ignorance about it sometimes. Um, but, I mean, there's been times, you know, we never had backing up until this year. We were getting loans for the Philly stuff. And so you have you have to make more money than you spend. Um, when you're trying to grow really fast at the same time, it's like, you know, there's been plenty of times where we've been a $100,000 deficit and need to pay our card off in 10 days or, or five days or three days. And it just happens. Right. So there's like, there's stress and anxiety that if you're not, if you're not trusting in God, you have, you can easily get lost in like the stress of somebody wants to sue you or something like that, because who knows why like you're building a big company people perceive your company as a big company even though it's not yet um there's just so many different there's there's so much evil out there too and and legislation that does not make that makes it hard to build a business and it's just it's it feel there's times where it feels like everyone's coming to get you and you're like, I'm just making cookies. I'm like, that's I'm just that's like ice cream too. I'm trying to do right. ice cream too, but like it's it's just um yeah. There's definitely some like like you the 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 level of faith and trust mm. that you have to have, you know, is unparalleled to anything else. And so and that really builds on people, I think, and. And people don't understand that aspect. And so entrepreneurship is not for everyone. And their self-employed ship, which is equally entrepreneurship, but it's also, it's way for us, like when you start hiring 50 W2 employees and you have a lot of families to feed as well. And there's, there's a gravity there of, of what you're doing. And, but like, yeah, the big, the big, the reward is the reward is not only get do you get to grow as a person way way faster and 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 mature way quicker than any of your friends or anyone else. It's there's also just the reward of the doing, and then also, yeah. I mean, I was thinking about this the other day because there's just like a lot going on where I was like so stressed over just a few different things that were all happening at once that like my eyes were starting to go buggy mm. <laughs> and uh, like, like you were starting to blur out just from like, um, and you know, and then you read like Matthew six and, and just trying to like understand that stress doesn't add to your life <laughs> and, and you have to be like relying on the Lord and all those things. But man, I was thinking about that and it's just like, You think about, I'm not even like famous, famous. I mean, we, people bash me online for, and make up stuff about us, but there's also so much good about us too. Mm. I mean, it's so crazy because we're just selling cookies, but, (laughs) um, you know, it makes you think like, what am I being prepared for? Because I do have this big vision and I think in the, it's a cute idea to say, I want to be, I want my business and then. What I, I want my business to propel me into whatever I'm going to do next. And I want to have, you know, you know, I want to have the largest conglomerate in the food, in the resources space, you know, I, the Unilever of the next generation is what I want to build. Beautiful. And I think that's a cute idea. But then you realize the amount of stress and levels that come with that. I mean, you think about, I mean, you think about, you know, um, all of the hate that not, I, I'm not voting, but you can use, um, like Trump for instance, right? Like all the hate that he gets for no reason, mm-hmm. like that you have to build to that, right? Like what it was his building process, whether or not you agree with him there through bi- business and entrepreneurship was the process in which he built the stamina and the resilience 
to stand up to the lies and the hate. And so with you can't just enter into a position like that without preparation. And so every time that I get overwhelmed or something's happening that just doesn't seem to be happening to any other company of our size, and mm-hmm. we're like, and I, I just ask the Lord, like, hey, this is really, I just never foresaw this, but like, what are you preparing me for? And I think it's like the vision that I have is so large and I think he wants to give us the desires, but also he's the one who gives vision in the first place. And so I'm just always, I'm just always more thinking about what I'm being prepared for. Wow. Wow. Dougie, thank you for that. Like, I know, I know that, um, pulled on some heartstrings, right? Because, you know, um, there's the glamor side of it and then there's the grit, you know, and the, and the, the stuff that, that a lot of people don't want to deal with. Right. And, and you obviously are building towards that. So I, I definitely want to talk more about vision, man. It's obvious. Like I didn't know you said it, but you know, there's two sides to your gift, right? There's understanding people and there's vision casting. So this vision casting, like you could have been easily content long time ago. Right. I imagine. Right. You could have just said, you know what? We're making millions. We're doing great. <laughs> stay here. We're good. Family is good. Business is good. Life is good. We'll just stay here. Mm-hmm. But no, you have a bigger, compelling vision. Obviously, it, it sounds like God is leading, leading you that way. But talk to us about vision for from like what what drives you vision wise and then also what is it? with your gift of vision that like, is it something innate that just pushes you? Like talk to us about like inside the head of Dougie when it comes to vision. Yeah. um, I mean, you have your big over arc. I think you have your big overarching thing that you eventually want to accomplish. That's like out there. Um, And to me, that overarching like big vision is i'm still trying to figure out how much of that should be private and how much of that should be public and like what 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 i what i release and what i because event you know essentially it's it's as simple as you know we're not building a cookie company you know we're 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 building so much more and 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 we and i think people get want to put you in a box of you have a cookie company and it's like well yeah jeff bezos has an it has a bookstore <laughs> it's just that's just the easiest way to get from that i know that's the easiest way for me to get from, from point a to point b to point z right where it's like then there's so many different letters in between there that uh, that reveal themselves as they go and so you have your your z plan but your z plan i think will change so much over time that it's almost not worth talking about too much because how it manifests itself is different than how you envision it. But Mm -hmm. I think a lot of what I love is I just hated the church growing up, like not like physically, not like (laughs) demonically hate, but like just, it's just the passivity of it all. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the way, I mean, like, you know, I, I, I'm interested in the fact that like I follow Levitical law as close as possible. I love, I love the commands and I, and I don't eat like pork, shellfish, fish, stuff like that. I mean, there's things that you can still follow. And I just find joy in that because it gets me closer to the Lord. And I feel like there's, there's no d- desire for that in the current, in a lot of the Christian mm-hmm. faith. And mm-hmm. so I struggle to put myself in the Christian box but uh but uh you know one of those callings early on to me was like why are we not trying to be heads of industry if we believe what we believe dominate why should we not be dominating the industry why are we so passive and it's just to me it was disgusting Mm -hmm. and so you know that's part of why is because i believe that so a, a man who is sanctified towards the will of the father is powerful Mm. and that power is one that will benefit all that come in contact with him and it will leave a lasting legacy and that at the end of the day 
will help more people enter into the kingdom. And so that is, in general, in generalities, that is essentially the goal to a certain extent. I love it, man. Thank you for breaking that down. I mean, it, it's clear, right? Like, you know, I, it, it's God is directing you, man, because there is a lot of, uh, from a church standpoint, a lot of, I feel like this, this is how I've always felt too, that the church has a lot of God's presence, right? Like they know God, Jesus is a presence and the world has a lot of God's principles and they obey his principles and abide mm-hmm. the principles and they have the success. But where we lack is believers that have the principles and the presence. And that's what mm-hmm. I'm hearing from you is like, I'm going to go out there and do it and dominate because the word kingdom, it has dominion in it. It's about dominating. And it's not about, um, you know, God, please help my like, 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 yes, God will help those. My, one of my friends said like this, you know how the scripture says, uh, God orders your steps. Uh, it says God orders your steps, not your standing, you know, not your, not your, yeah. like, you know, like you gotta be in action. Right. So I love yeah, the yeah. fact that you have that mindset, man. And, uh, that's, it's very rare. Um, and and so back to to a little bit about vision right so talk to us about how you started to recruit people to this vision of tailorship right imagine just starting out like you said you spent four hundred dollars to get a space and like how do you recruit to the point of where you have multiple multiple w2 employees today and you still got to cast vision to get people in, in alignment with where you guys are going as a as an organization so talk to us about that I mean, yeah, you have your mission statement and all that stuff. Um, I think it just happens. I mean, that's one of those questions that just kind of figure themselves out to a certain degree. You know, it's and also, you know, my wife and I work together. She is my partner in this business and we are equally great at the things that the other people are not. And so, you know, she's really good at, she's just super nice. And so she's just really good at creating culture. She works so hard. And when people around her are working, they're working harder than they ever have before in their life and having fun while doing it. And so a lot of the culture and like the W2 stuff, that all happens on her side. And that's really a result of who she is as a person. Um, and then, and then when it comes to the senior management team and the, and the executive suite on our, on our, within our business, that is where I'm more closer to them and kind of imparting the vision. I'm telling them the numbers. I'm, I'm, we're, we're very open about everything, but I think it's, I think as you start, you're afraid to share stuff. Yeah. And then as you get bigger, you open up more and more. And so like, having KPIs in place and different departments, but also just sharing the numbers, sharing the upsides and the downsides and, and allowing and paying people. Well, I think we've, we, we pay people above industry, well above industry, and it's never mm-hmm. hurt us. Um, it's only hurt us when we try to pay under industry standards mm-hmm. because we're always looking for a players bring a players, but they also know what they're worth. And so, Mm -hmm. and so it's way more expensive to hire somebody at $15 an hour and they have to, and then he quit three weeks later versus hiring somebody at $23 an hour Mm -hmm. and they're with you for three years. Wow. And then, and then we're, we're quick to give raises as well and, and try to be as giving, and liberal with our pay as we possibly can. Obviously, we are still a cash flow business, yeah. so that limits you too. Right. But, but yeah, I mean, no one has ever been on our team and left in a better, in a worse position than they have. And in fact, we have disgruntled employees just like anyone else does, but they're disgruntled about how happy our environment was because we hired bad and they were just bad people and they tried to destroy our culture. And we just didn't let them. And so they got bitter that they couldn't do it. And mm-hmm. it's, it's just, it's, um, and so, yeah, I mean, we, we were very blessed in that way with our team and all of that. that that's phenomenal. Um, you spoke to the, to an aspect, right? You, you and your wife run the business together. That's, that's a, an accomplishment in itself, right? Marriage yeah. is, is work and building a business is, is work and doing both together and raising kids and doing all of that. Right. So, yeah. If you could speak to the wisdom you've learned just 
doing all of those things together, right? That's not easy. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I love being busy. Um, and just that like ADHD side of me, I guess, or whatever, where it's just, it's just, I can do so much Mm. and I know how to delegate and yeah. And also building with your wife kind of like is a cheat code Mm. because then you're always spending time with her. And she understands. I didn't like that. That's (laughs) cheating. And she understands as well why you're working so much because she is too mm. and then um and then having kids is has been it was challenging just because we didn't plan out our business properly when she first had our daughter and so we lost a lot of ground on the growth side of things because we couldn't fulfill because we had we went through like six managers and no one could do anything like what sarah could do Mm. and so there was a gap there and that was something i wish we planned for a little bit better but so we we ended up losing like three million dollars of top line growth Mm. just because of not being able to fulfill and things but Mm. obviously you have your your, our daughter who is incredible and Mm. so so and i think that's just like you know you have to learn again money is not important um you know and family and all that stuff is just great so yeah, we, and I think we want a pretty big family too. Um, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how many we do, we go for. But yeah. there we go. <laughs> Get a starting five. That'd be nice. Um, so so I want to respect your time, Doug. I just got two last questions for you, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, one, obviously, that people can go to tailorchip dot com. But tell us about the the brand, right? The cookies, and you know how people can get plugged in. I, I love them as I shared. Uh, yeah. So tell us a little about that. Yeah. I mean, we've uh, just, we're kind of better for you cookies. Everything we do is made in house. Um, we don't use corn syrup. Uh, we stay away from like, you know, dyes and, and we try to, I mean, you, you might use like, oh, um, you might use like an Oreo cookie cookie or something like that and that has palm oil and there's no way to get around that if you want to use oreo because people really like that but when we're doing our own flavors like our jam we make in-house using fruit pectin as a stabilizer and fruit and that's just a simple and so we try to be simple and clean and you know local ingredients whenever possible non-gmo eggs and things like that that just help i mean it helps with digestion it helps like we use avocado oil versus like a versus like palm oils and and versus like vegetable oils and and because because avocado oil has a higher heat point and and it's just overall is a better product and and you taste the difference in like the lava cake cookie and stuff like that so um yeah so we're just we're just very focused on like the better for you side of things and just making sure that if it's not something that we wouldn't eat we wouldn't want to serve it to you Mm um and so that's kind of how we feel. Um, and, you know, I think there's brands that go all in on just better for you, organic, blah, blah, blah. And that's not us because we have customers that they want, they they ask for and want the M&M cookie. And, I'm, and we tell everybody in our marketing, we're like, we don't eat M&Ms. <laughs> you shouldn't either, but we'll get, we're, we'll, but if it, you're going to eat it anyway, and if you're asking for it, then that's that's fine. So we have some rule breaking cookies there, but I think it's all about balance anyway. Yeah. Um, and so that's like, uh, yeah, that's kind of like who we are. Um, and then, um, yeah, we have locations all around Pennsylvania area, mm-hmm. like Lancaster, Harrisburg, York, Hershey, um, Intercourse, Philadelphia, Fishtown. And, um, and then we ship nationwide and then we're in dash Mart in like 80 some cities. So LA, Miami, Dallas areas, like what, you know, check dash Mart. If you have dash Mart availability around you, that's the yeah. farthest reaching, um, going into a few other loca- stores too around the country soon. So excited about that. And, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of us, I guess. Very cool, man. I love it. 
Well, I'm, I'm going to put a plug. Please, everybody, go to taylorchip.com. Go to Dash Mart. Go and do yourself a favor. You'll be hooked. Uh, yeah. you, you get a chance to taste these cookies. They're amazing. So, uh, Dougie, the last question we always ask every everyone on the show, you weren't prepped for this, is what's the difference between one's gift and one's purpose? One's gift and one's purpose. Oh, I'm... I, I guess, you know, your purpose, I mean, your purpose is to serve God and create his kingdom on earth. Mm -hmm. uh, your gift is probably how you go about doing that. Mm -hmm. At least that's how I feel about it. Yeah. No, simple to the point. Love it, man. <laughs> Good stuff. Dougie, I can't thank you enough. For, this is phenomenal, man. Just thank you for, for holding nothing back, man. Giving us everything. Listeners, can I know you're going to listen to this episode multiple, multiple times like, like I am. Um, so thank you, Dougie, for, for pouring your heart out for, for folks. Yes, sir. Yeah, good to connect with you again. And I'm um, sorry it took me so long to get here. No worries, brother. It was worth the wait. <laughs>